Everybody. This is Christopher Brower here with Daily Motor and today we're driving a 2022 Kia K5 GT line all-wheel drive. Ever since this car came out I thought that it looked absolutely fabulous. The Kia K5 is Kia's replacement for the Optima and it was actually called the K5 in other countries before it came over to the US and from every angle I think that this thing just looks absolutely fantastic. This is a little bit of a shrinking segment in the current new car market. We no longer get sedans this size from companies like Ford and GM. So it's up to the Koreans and the Japanese and the Germans and the Italians, I suppose, to deliver the mid-size or compact sedans, whatever you want to call it. And this K5 sits right in that segment beautifully, especially wearing these awesome orange running lights. I love what Kia has been doing with making their running lights orange. I know that's something that sounds so simple and silly, but they've done it on this, they've done it on the Telluride, and I think that it just looks absolutely fabulous. Being that this is a 2022, we also have the new Kia badge on here that looks a bit like a K backwards N, but I think that it spices things up a little bit and removes the stigma of Kia not being the nicest or most luxurious brand. They've reinvented their image and they've done it so well and this K5 is no exception of that. This one is finished in wolf gray, which looks a bit like primer, but it does have some metallic sparkle in there. It's a little bit hard to see in the shade with the sun behind the clouds right now. Let's take a look in the trunk here. Not technically a power trunk, but it springs open nicely with the push of that button. Quite a large trunk space. I was able to fit quite a few boxes in here yesterday was able to do everything that I wanted it to. We do have a spare wheel in here, just a space saver though, it is not full sized. Little tool kit, jack, tire iron on top of that, and a nice K5 branded trunk mat. Cool stuff. One thing I don't like about the trunk though is that there's nowhere to close it. I don't have anywhere to pull it down, which means if your car is wet or covered in salt or anything like that. You have to touch the nasty X. And look at this right now, it's just covered in salt. It's the middle of winter and we've been driving around with the current road conditions. It's nasty, I have to get my hands dirty to close this trunk. So not the best feature there, but we'll gloss over that for right now. Taking a look in this back seat here, Kia has done a fantastic job with this red interior. I always love cars that have red interior. What is it about red interior that's just so cool? It adds a whole cool factor to a car. And really, really ample amounts of leg room back here. I am not cramped at all. Good amount of headroom too, even though we have a panoramic moonroof in this K5. I'm very comfortable back here. I mean, check out this leg room. I'm a five foot 11 individual. This driver's seat is adjusted for my driving position and I just have tons of room back here. Center armrest as well, finished in red to match the rest of the interior. Couple of cup holders, more cup holders in each door panel. Nice red leather detailing transferred onto both door panels back here as well, and they match the fronts. What a concept. Two USB ports back here as well. No climate control panel, but that's okay. For the price point that this car is at, this interior quality, even just from the back seat, is really nice. Not only do we have red leather, they're also perforated, and we have really nice black detailing that goes throughout the whole middle of the seat here. All right, let's go ahead and move up to the front. Give you a little sneak peek while I'm back here, because this is a pretty cool view. All right, let's go ahead and move up there. Up here, we're greeted with some pretty familiar sights. Very typical looking Kia interior, but that nowadays is a very, very good thing. I love this GT line steering wheel. It's nice leather wrapped and has a flat bottom. GT line badging here, I think that looks fabulous as well. And of course our new logo right here in the middle on the horn slash airbag. Other steering wheel controls include steering assist, radar cruise, cruise volume switches here, a little adjuster here on the left. And speaking of volume controls, we do have a physical volume knob there to the left of our infotainment screen. 
wired Apple CarPlay on this Kia K5. And the actual infotainment itself, you of course have this really nice calm screen here on the left and then the rest of your menus here on the right. If you're curious to learn more about the infotainment or the sound system in this Kia K5, make sure to check out Charlie's video on that. It will be linked down below. Otherwise, we do have a physical climate control panel here. We can adjust our fan speed and, well, everything that goes into climate adjustments. Nice physical shifter here as well. We used to get one like this on the Kia Stinger, but they've since moved to an electronic one. I like the way this one feels. Not crazy about the way that it looks, but it's not too bad. I like this button here on the side for the unlock. Really nice red leather detailing up here as well, and even leather stitching here on the dash. That's something you don't see a lot in uh, cars that are in this price range. We don't have a fully digital cluster, but that's okay. We have a display in the middle that you can go through here. You can see uh, your speed, your tire pressure, and tons of other menus, compass, attention level. I like to keep it right there on a digital speedo. It lets me know how fast I'm going. Other than that though, heated seats and steering wheel in this K5 GT line. We don't have cooled seats, but that's okay. Drive mode selector right here. Snow, smart, normal, sport, and custom. I'll start the review out here in normal. Really, really bright interior lights. That I think they're LED. They do a really good job. All right, well, most of that out of the way. Why don't we take this Kia K5 GT line all-wheel drive out on the daily motor test route and see what it's like to drive. Real nice feel. Actually, before we set off, let's show off the reverse camera. No 360 camera on this K5, but we do have a swiveling reverse camera. Tells you where you're, where you are and where you're going. That's always nice to have. And a nice feel from that shifter. Really nice light steering in this Kia K5. There is a lightness in general to driving this car that is quite nice. Makes it very accessible to anyone that would want to drive it. Here we go. So under the hood of this Kia K5 GT line is a turbocharged 1.6 liter inline four cylinder engine. It makes 180 horsepower and 195 foot pounds of torque. And that's mated to an eight speed traditional automatic transmission. It is not the fastest or most complex powertrain out there, but it gets the job done for what it is. The throttle response is interesting as well. Being, and I'm, I'm adding it up to this because I don't know how else to make sense of it, being that this is such a small turbocharged engine, it has to take time to build some boost. So when you're on throttle, you've got nothing, nothing, and then everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a touchy throttle response, and that could have to do also with just the way that they've tuned the gas pedal. And weirdly, the brake pedal's the same way. It's very sort of nothing, nothing, everything. But it's not, it's not in an alarming fashion. I've gotten very used to it. We were driving a diesel GMC Sierra last week that had very just smooth inputs for everything. And then immediately getting into this Kia K5, it was a little... Concerning, Yeah, you got to kind of get into the brake pedal here. Steering feel, though, is pretty good. Nice lightness to all the controls. Quick, smooth shifts from that 8-speed automatic. Minimal wind noise and actually a very smooth ride in this car as well. Corner's flat. Solid performance there. Something you don't get in a comparable SUV. This car handles so nice. It's often refreshing to get into these sedans and be reminded 
of how nice they actually drive and how you're able to fling them around corners and you don't have extreme amounts of body roll like you'd get in a Sportage or a Sorento. So that's nice. And that is honestly what I like most about this Kia K5 is that it's a car. People are still able to buy a car. Ford and GM ditched all their cars, so everyone that still desires to drive something that isn't a lifted up hatchback has to go somewhere else. And this Kia K5 is a great option. Rough ride section here. No big deal. No big deal at all. And I think this car is a great option for a couple of reasons. For one, it comes with tons of driver aids, tons of just attractive things in this interior. We've got steering assist, we've got lane keep assist that you can use without having the cruise control on so this car will steer itself in a lovely fashion. Kias and Hyundais and Genesises do a fantastic job with driver assist and I'm happy to report that this K5 GT line has all of those things. Apple CarPlay with this really nice, large, attractive infotainment display that works very well. Red leather seats, I mean, that just makes this thing look way more expensive than it actually is. And keeping on that topic, the exterior design, I think they did a fabulous job, maybe even to the point where some could argue that it's too aggressive looking, but I don't think that it is. I think that they've, they've nailed the design and the market that they're actually going after for this car I think we'll find this design to be very, very suiting for what they're looking for. And all of these luxurious and aggressive looking design features, these really nice red leather seats, everything you see here, this car as spec'd is only 31 grand. And you get this really nice sedan with all wheel drive, all these features for what you'd pay for like a mid-level Ford Escape. Why would you not have this? This has more interior space. It looks better. It drives better. I would just, I would have this every day of the week. And this has a couple of options in it. The base price on the GT Line all wheel drive is 29,000. And you can have a K5 from the mid 20s. This is not an expensive car. And everyone I've seen this week that's seen me driving this, they all think it's much more expensive than it is. And when I'm like, no, it's 30 grand. 30 grand gets you all this. And they're like, what? I, I would have guessed that it was quite a bit more than that. A couple of mid-2000s icons right here in front of me. We don't get to go fast, but we get to look at a nice, oh, got it. What is it? Cat Eye, they call that? Dually. And a first-generation Ford Expedition. Okay. Here we go, merging on at a nice, safe 43 miles per hour. Ah, uh, 50... Okay, 52, 54, 57. This gentleman must be going straight, he is. Okay, great. Well, now's a good time to try out our radar guided cruise control, which we can set like so, and we can adjust our distance here with this. I usually like to run the closest distance because the closest distance is still usually pretty far. We'll hang on to this thing until we get a line here for it to bounce off of. And there you go. It's steering, it's lane keeping, and it's cruising all by itself. Who needs a Tesla when you can just have a Kia K5? It just does it all. I am simply a passenger at this point. Such a lovely system, and it goes so long without yelling at you. In fact, it's probably about to. Nope, it still hasn't. There it is. It usually takes this thing like 30 seconds to, to butt in and tell you to take over. I still have yet to drive a car with a system that's, for one, is as easy to use and as good at this price point. Sure, you can always argue, you know, Mercedes-Benz and Cadillac Super Cruise and all of that stuff, but this is in a $30,000 Kia, and it works as just as good as a, as a Tesla. I'm realizing now I've done my review slightly out of order today because I talked about price too soon, but this gives us a chance maybe to try out our manual shifting mode here in this Kia K5. Slap the shifter over to the left, and you have manual shifting. So let's give it the beans here. Ooh. Up is up and down is down, which is inherently backwards, but we'll give it a pass because this is 
not really a sports car. Should have been in sport mode there. Let's try some downshifts. Got a display right here telling you what gear you're in. Ah, it shifted for me there. Even though that isn't the best system, I still appreciate that you do have the option to shift gears manually. Ooh, really aggressive throttle response there in sport mode. It actually makes the throttle pedal feel a little bit better. It's not as numb. The only problem with that is now, you know, it's holding third gear or whatever we're in. Let's try smart mode. Smart mode is essentially like eco. Wow, this is really torn up through here. <laughs> oh, yep, beeping at me for going over the line. I'm so impressed with the road holding and just overall driving characteristics of this Kia K5. I suppose that's where we'll get to our conclusion here is that this is just an overall all-round car that I would 100% recommend to anyone that's looking for a car in this segment. I think it looks the best. We don't know really long-term what reliability is going to be like because the K5 has only been out for a couple of years, but I would assume that with your 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty, you wouldn't really have to worry about anything reliability-wise for quite a while. It looks fabulous, and it's such an accessible car. Pretty much anyone can afford this thing, and they can ride around in style for a pretty low price. Is it the most inspiring thing I've ever driven? Is it the most fun thing to drive? No, but that's not really what they're aiming for. And if you want one that's sportier, they do make a full proper GT. This is just the GT line. This is more of an appearance pack for someone that wants to look sporty but doesn't necessarily care about having that extra 100 horsepower. So overall, a really nice choice in the segment and one that I would certainly recommend to people. This is one of those cars that you post photos of it on social media and it gets 100,000 retweets because people just simply cannot believe that for one, this is a Kia and two, it's only 30 grand. All right, guys, and that's going to wrap up our drive of this 2022 Kia K5 GT line all wheel drive. There is actually one thing that I forgot to mention that I absolutely love about this interior. I hate when I drive a car with nowhere to put your phone. And this thing actually has a couple of places to put your phone. For one, you've got this super clever little cubby down here that doesn't look like much. It's just a little trap door, but there's a wireless charger here and your phone slots down into it. This is a, got a, what phone do I have? iPhone 12 Max, Pro Max, whatever fits in there nicely but if you don't want the wireless charger aspect of it you've got a little grippy place up there to put your phone as well so lots of good places you can always appreciate cars that have spots for your phone because of course nowadays that is something that's quite important switch this thing off let's do one last little walk around of it before we end today ah oh, wait we can see this paint here in the sun now See the sparkle, the metallic in that wolf gray metallic. There's almost a little bit of gold in this color. Quite a nice look. All right, guys. Well, thank you again so much for watching. This has been Christopher Brower with Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.